come in. Hi. Hi, Tim. It's Mary, the student nurse from CVTC, and I am here to um, give you some medication through your IV. And this is an antibiotic that your doctor has ordered to help treat that infection that you have. And I just want to ask you how you would like to be addressed today, Tim or Timothy or Mr. Pometlo? Tim, Tim is fine? Okay, great. And I just need to verify your full name and date of birth, please, before we begin. Tim Pometlo, 71064. Thank you very much. And do you have any allergies, Tim, that I should be aware of? No. Okay, great. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get that started. I already did my first two checks on my medication at the Pixis, and then now I'm going to do my third check here in the room with my computer and my scanner. So now that I've completed that third check, I'm going to go ahead and get my equipment ready here and my medication. So first and foremost, I just want to mention that prior to giving any medication with an IV that's already running, since this is your primary IV and it's normal saline, you want to make sure that whatever you're going to put with this IV, because this is going to go with this IV to be infused, that it is compatible with that solution. Um, you have to be particularly careful with some medications. Um, if, this, if this had like potassium chloride in this as well as normal saline and you were to give a medication with that, Make sure you check that compatibility. Um, use your computer resource, uh, or you can always call the pharmacist to find out if it's compatible or not. All right, so good. So I did my checks, and I'm gonna go ahead and prepare my medication. So this here is a, what we call a secondary IV solution set, and it is used mainly for giving a secondary IV medication. Another name for that is a piggyback. So um, just make sure you have the right tubing and you have also a hanger in there. You'll, that'll kind of cue you into that must be a secondary set as well. All right, so we're just going to um, put this here for now just to get it out of the way. And then again, we have our tubing and always make sure you're clamping your tubing before you do anything else. Just make sure that it doesn't go, the fluid that you have in the bag doesn't go all over. All right, so we're taking that off. Okay, our tubing is clamped. This one's a little easier to work with on a primary. So again, we have two ports, and the one port is just avoided. It's for medications to go in, um, injected actually into the bag. This is the port that you're gonna put the spike in. And once again, you're gonna wanna make sure that when you open this, that you don't touch it, you keep it sterile. And the same with the spike, keep that sterile. So you can put that right in there. And sometimes, you, like I said, you have to kind of twist it in there. All right, so now that we have this spiked, we can begin what we call back priming. Um, back priming is best practice because that avoids um, accidentally um, getting rid of some of the medication and or wasting the medication. We want to make sure we have all the medication possible to give that patient as ordered. All right, so when we back prime, you, you need to obviously have a primary bag and this one is running, and it's normal saline. It's compatible with the cefotrioxone that we're giving the patient. You want to find the, the port closest to the uh, IV bag to do your back priming with, which this one is the closest to the IV bag. Then you also want to make sure you take your scrub hub because we want that area to be clean. Some facilities will all, already have a scrub cap on that stays on, so then you wouldn't have to actually clean it because it's already clean because the cap is on there. If they don't have one though, you make sure that you do your 10 to 15 second scrub. All right, once we have that completed, we let that kind of dry a little bit and then I'm ready to go ahead and insert this tubing into that port. Okay. So I take the cap off of this one, keeping the port clean or sterile and you're gonna screw that right on to that um, lure lock there. Okay, so once I have that on, then I can go ahead and begin my back priming. And the only big key to remember with back priming is to have this bag lower um, than this bag because we want some of this fluid to go into this tubing so we can get all that air out of there. So basically we're just filling this tubing up with normal saline and we're saving the amount of our medication as well. So it's fairly simple. So you don't have to go all the way down here like this. Um, you can just leave it right about here so you can see what you're doing and you can watch the fluid come up from the primary bag. 
once you open up your and then you'll start to see bubbles and that means it's 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 working so now we have our fluid filling up our chamber when it gets halfway close your roller clamp and then you've you've already just you've primed your tubing now so now we have no air in here okay so the next step that we're going to do is since this is our secondary or piggyback it needs to be um, higher than our primary so we're just going to switch these two okay and we're going to place um, the primary bag lower so now we have our piggyback so it's above our primary and then make sure now you want to uh, open up your roller clamp otherwise it won't flow okay so then we can go ahead and select our um, secondary uh, piggyback all right and can we pause just a second <laughs> I was going to say, I don't know how to run that. You can always, you can, I'm not, I'm so I just pretend? Yeah, you can, okay. yeah, you can do that. All right. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Everything's great. You hear the beep, so it sounds right. Yeah, there you go. All right. So we're just going to exit that. And our, all right. So. All right. All right. So we'll set our um, piggyback to the um, ordered amount. So this patient is going to be getting uh, cefetrioxam one gram and it is in a 50 ml bag and it's supposed to be given over a 30 minute time frame. So we're going to set our pump at 100 ml per hour. So we'll, we go ahead and we do that and then we start. Everything's open and then we want to make sure our drip chamber is dripping, which it is. Okay. And then we're gonna come back in about 15 minutes and check on the patient and the IV site. All right, how are you doing, Tim? We got everything going here? Good. Doing okay? Great. All right, once again, I'm going to make sure that I come back and check on you, but before that time, let me know if you're having any discomfort in that IV site, um, any burning, stinging, or if you feel like fluid is leaking out of the site, um, go on your call light and let me know and I'll be right in. All right, anything else I can do for you, Tim? Do you have any other questions? No. Okay, great. So I'm just going to make sure your bed is locked and lowered and your side rails are up and you have your call light and I'm going to um, exit the room now and if you need me earlier, let me know. Thank you.